On today's episode, the Dallas Stars are rumored to be interested in Chicago Blackhawks forward Patrick Kane. And today we'll talk about whether or not there's any truth to this, whether this is something the Stars should pursue as the NHL trade deadline is rapidly approaching. All of this and more on a Friday episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you Uh, Enjoy daily Dallas Stars content here on YouTube. You can also follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. Well, let's jump into it today. Uh, Of course, the Stars have a game tomorrow against the Tampa Bay Lightning. We'll touch on that at the end of the show. But I want to go back to the start of the week. On Monday, uh, a tweet actually surfaced. Um, from a guy named Mario, I believe I'm saying his name correctly, Mario Tirabassi, uh, someone who covers the Chicago Blackhawks for the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Uh, From what I can find, uh, a a blue checkmark account, and from what I could find, a a, a legacy blue checkmark, not someone who is subscribed to Twitter Blue. So it seems to be a pretty credible source. Uh, And he tweeted out again on Monday, February 6th, a little after noon p.m., Uh, He said Patrick Kane says his agent has come to him with some teams that have shown interest in trading for him, but that he's still undecided about what to do for his future. And I feel like this has been pretty common knowledge for for quite some time now. Uh, Many will, you know, have known that the Blackhawks obviously in the middle of a pretty big rebuild. And so the futures of both Patrick Kane and Blackhawks captain Jonathan Taves have been in question for a while with both of them coming to the end of their long and expensive contracts that they signed around eight years ago. But the interesting thing is not necessarily that tweet uh, that, you know, Kane is undecided what he wants to do with his future, that there's teams out there interested. The interesting part of all of this is that there was a quote tweet from David Pagnota, who is an NHL analyst for uh, the NHL network and, and a very notable face here in, in NHL media. Very simple quote tweet where he says the New York Rangers and Dallas among them, among them being in reference to uh, the the teams that are potentially interested in the services of Patrick Kane. And this isn't the first time that the stars have been in circulation and discussion to make a move for the Chicago Blackhawk forward. Uh, If you've been listening to the show for a while, you remember we did an episode about six months ago back in the summer in the offseason. There were some rumors that popped up then, but those rumors were shot down pretty quick uh, and shown to not really have a a lot of truth behind them. Um, Just maybe a miscommunication or, you know, a a false source trying to, you know, generate some clicks or views, what have you. But this has been discussed before Patrick Kane potentially coming to Dallas. So this isn't the first time we've had this conversation. But unlike last time, I haven't really seen these rumors be shot down uh, until, you know, recently, with, at least with the Rangers side. The, the New York Rangers, of course, have been kind of in this rumor uh, for a while as well. A team that has a very solid base, but of course, looking to add a few pieces before or at the NHL trade deadline in order to put themselves over the edge. But the Rangers have now, it, it seems, made their move or at least their biggest move. Uh, here before the deadline in just a few weeks. New York actually picked up a a new forward on Thursday morning, early afternoon. They strike a deal with the St. Louis Blues to get Vladimir Tarasenko. uh, And they it seems to be a pretty good deal for the Rangers. Uh, I know they got another player in the trade as well um, and sent a a prospect and a few picks uh, and a a bottom six winger back to St. Louis. And then I think the Blues are also retaining 50% 
uh, of Tarasenko, $7.5 million cap hit. Not here to really talk about that trade, but the significance of bringing it up is that I think that eliminates the Rangers from contention of seeking Patrick Kane, who is worth $10.5 million this season on his cap hit. So if what Pagnotto was saying in his tweet on Monday, if there is any substance to that, then the stars seem like maybe potentially the, the prime candidate to land Patrick Kane, potentially. I mean, it's not a done deal, and surely there are other teams out there that could be interested in her, his services, whether that's the Devils, uh, the Bruins, the Hurricanes, I mean, another powerhouse team, and maybe even in the Western Conference. Who's to say that the Colorado Avalanche don't look to strike a deal to land Patrick Kane? Not saying it's an all-but-done deal, but it does make things incredibly interesting that it was kind of told that the Rangers and the Stars were two of the biggest teams potentially interested uh, in Kane and his ability and his you know play style. But now the Rangers seem to have taken themselves out of the hunt. And so, you know, what does this mean for Patrick Kane? Obviously, he's still undecided with where he wants to go. I think that that makes a ton of sense. He would need to approve pretty much any trade that is proposed because he has a no move clause. And so really, wherever he ends up, it's going to be a place that he wants to be. And I imagine if he does look to move on a place that, you know, he, he thinks that he can potentially win another title to add to his already impressive trophy case. But it's a very complicated situation for him, I'm sure. He's 34 years old and having a little bit of a down season, uh, which I mean, it's a down season overall, but he's tied for first on the Chicago Blackhawks in points, nine goals and 26 assists. Certainly not the numbers that we've grown accustomed to seeing Patrick Kane put up in 46 games played this season. There's a little bit of speculation with the down numbers that there's some sort of nagging lower body injury. Uh, and I've heard multiple reports uh, on 32 thoughts, of the podcast with Elliot Friedman that, you know, that there's, you know, him playing through some sort of injury and his teammates acknowledging that saying that some of them might not even be playing if they were going through what he's gone through. So we don't really know the details and I, or I can't really find any specific, oh, this is what's wrong, or this is for sure an injury that he's, you know, dealing with and powering through. But I mean, there probably has to be some sort of truth to that with the numbers that he's putting up. Because even with the Blackhawks being as bad as they've been over the past few years, Patrick Kane has still been a very, very good player, including last season when the Blackhawks were equally as bad as they are during this 22 23 campaign. Patrick Kane still was putting up really, really high numbers, elite numbers, 92 points, 26 goals. I mean, nearly a 100-point score on one of the worst teams in the NHL. And, and I think any team would be interested in the services of a player of that caliber, and I'm sure that includes the Dallas Stars, but we'll talk in a second uh, about what that might look like for them and if that's something they should do. But there's the lower body injury. There's an article from Greg Wisniewski on ESPN saying that it's something that Patrick Kane himself has really said that he's not too overly concerned about that. I mean, maybe he's just playing poorly because the Blackhawks don't have the support around him. I guess that that's something that we could speculate on. But I'm sure that there's also some difficulty on his end of the idea of potentially leaving Chicago, which is the only city he's really known as home since joining the NHL when he was the first overall pick back in 2007. And I know he's been having some conversations, I'm sure, with his teammates, with his family. And in the ESPN article from Wisniewski even mentioned a conversation uh, with Duncan Keith, who you know spent pretty much the entirety of his career in Chicago. And then for one final season, played in Edmonton and talked about how he enjoyed it. But there you know, were some things he had to move past and you know things that he just didn't really know what to expect in playing in a different market in a different country. Of course, if Kane comes to Dallas, it's not a different country. But it's just going to be a change of scenery for him in a pretty big way, moving from a team that he's been around for several, several years. I mean, almost 20 years up to this point, just a few years shy, and then going to a completely different part of the country. So I'm sure there's a lot to consider on his end, but it's very interesting that we haven't really seen much traction since these tweets on Monday pointing that the stars are going to make this move. But we also really haven't seen any holes poked in the theories, at least that I've seen. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what becomes of Patrick Kane if he decides that he wants to be traded somewhere. Will he actually go to Dallas or will he look to join a team maybe like Colorado or Boston teams that in his eyes might be a more complete unit to join? Because he is, again, going to have say in where he ends up if he decides to move on from the Blackhawks because of that no move clause. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue to talk about Patrick Kane, 
and whether or not Dallas would be a good fit for him or if this is even a move that the Stars should make. More on that right after this. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports both fun and easy. So download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet and you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a first touchdown in the game between the Chiefs and the Eagles this Sunday night. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast at. Of course, we are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. Thank you guys again for tuning in this week. We're continuing to talk about Patrick Kane. Some rumors circulating that the Dallas Stars could be interested in him at the trade deadline. And of course, that this is something that I'm sure is already being discussed amongst Stars fans. And it's a discussion that I think is worth having because just like any trade that could be made, there's pros and there's cons to adding any type of player to your roster. And there's a few in each category for Patrick Kane in the case to be made of him coming and be, you know, joining this Dallas Stars team. And to start off with one of the pros, and it's a pretty simple one, it's very basic, but it doesn't take away from the truth of it. He's Patrick Kane. I mean, this is one of the best players in recent NHL history. He is a three-time Stanley Cup champion, a Conn Smythe Trophy winner, a Hart Trophy winner, an Art Ross Trophy winner. I mean, this guy, since being drafted first overall in 2007, I feel like has delivered on every expectation placed upon him, at least on the ice. I mean, he was responsible for the dynasty that was the Chicago Blackhawks kind of in the late 2000s and the early 2010s. They were so dominant due in large part to the player that he was, which of course now being 34 years old, not quite as electric or as speedy or explosive as a player. But again, we saw him score 92 points last season at a, at 33 years old. And I think that there could still be something left in the tank as we see with older players across the league, like Joe Pavelski and maybe a change of scenery is what he needs. And, Again, we don't really know the severity of whatever injury may be nagging him or bothering him, but he's Patrick King, and he's an incredible player, one of the better players of my generation of, of players that I watched dominate this game for so long. And so, of course, if you're getting the guy that scored 92 points last season, if you're getting the guy who has won the MVP, who's won the Art Ross Trophy, been one of the best playoff performers in recent memory, I mean, absolutely. It sounds like a match made in heaven, given you know the Stars' needs on their roster right now. Can you imagine a, a top six of Jason Robertson, Rope Hintz, Joe Pavelski, Mason Marchment, Tyler Sagan, and Patrick Kane? I, I mean, that is a deadly, deadly group of six right there. And then, of course, I think the rest of the roster works really well underneath them. And then I think you have that depth piece that can come in and provide scoring. But then to talk about one of the cons, he's Patrick Kane, but a player of his you know, prestige, his pedigree, comes at a pretty heavy price. And we talked about it, we, we touched on it a second ago. He cost $10.5 million. That's a big, big cap hit for a team like the Stars who don't really have much cap space to work with to begin. You know, They are, have even had to make a small move, sending Marion Studenich back down to the Texas Stars. They brought him up to play against the Wild on Wednesday, but now with two days off in between, sending him back down to acquire as much cap space as they can. Not going to be a ton, but just having to do these small paperwork moves to get as much money as possible here at the deadline and they'll maybe end up with around $2 million or close to it at the deadline is my guess. And so they, of course, as of right now, don't have the, the, the fundings for a Patrick Kane type player. But of course, you would have to factor in that the Blackhawks are retaining some sort 
uh, you know, some percentage of that cap hit. I don't know what that looks like with it being 10.5 million. Uh, I think the Blues and the Rangers deal was great for the Rangers because St. Louis is holding on to 50% of Tarasenko's cap hit. I don't know if the Stars could talk the Blackhawks into holding on to 50% of the 10.5 million. Be really nice, but I just don't know if it's possible. And, and I mean, it's just a very tricky hill to navigate. He cost a ton of money. Patrick Kane, $10.5 million cap hit. But then another pro, and this is actually really, I only have two pros and three cons to go with Patrick Kane potentially joining this team. Another pro is the veteran experience. And if you've been listening to this show for a while, you know how important that is uh, from my perspective of watching this team and specifically the Dallas Stars. Veteran experience and expertise goes a long way, not just in the regular season, but in the playoffs. And adding a guy like Kane to that locker room, I I think would do wonders for this team that's already in a pretty good place in terms of veteran leadership with Joe Pavelski, Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, uh, just to name a few of the vets on the team. And Patrick Kane has not only been to the playoffs a handful of times, he's had some pretty good success. I just ran through a lot of his accolades earlier. I mean, he's won three Stanley Cup championships with the Chicago Blackhawks. And so he's a guy who would come in and I think have pretty good chemistry in that locker room. I think he could come in and almost serve in that Pavelski role of being a leader, but knowing that he doesn't have to be the guy because there's already established leaders in that dressing room. But I think that there could be a ton of value, not just on the ice, but off the ice as well with the way that he can you know, take some of these younger guys under his wing and guys like Wyatt Johnston, Ty Delandria can, can learn from Patrick Kane and uh, in, in how to you know handle themselves in the Stanley Cup playoffs, which as we discuss at length all the time is just completely different uh, than what we see in the regular season. But if you ask me, I think there's more cons than, than pros in this situation. Not only does Patrick Kane cost $10.5 million with his cap hit this season, the Stars would probably have to give up a lot more uh, than just money and cap space. They're probably giving up uh, whatever draft picks they have left. They don't currently have a first or a third round pick for this upcoming draft due to the Scott Wedgwood and Niels Lundquist trades, respectively. And, and if it's not a draft pick, they're probably having to give up prospects, which the Stars do have a good prospect pool. But you have to imagine that the team, a team like the Chicago Blackhawks would be looking for the best names possible. And I'm talking guys like Logan Stankoven. I mean, that's kind of where the bar is set or Maverick Bork or, or maybe even, you know, other AHL players. The Blackhawks are looking for these young players that can provide value to their team and can potentially be slotted into play alongside Connor Bedard, who could find himself as the newest member of the Chicago Blackhawks this summer, depending on where Chicago lands in the lottery. And so the Stars would probably have to give up quite a bit in terms of prospects and and draft capital in order to get Patrick Kane. And and I've talked about this here on the show. I've talked about it on the National Locked On NHL podcast. If you're the Stars and if you're a Stars fan, you have to ask yourself the question, is it worth selling the farm? Is it worth selling these pieces for the return of a player like Kane to potentially win a championship. Now, I think Patrick Kane's a good player. I think there could be some benefits, but in my eyes, I just don't think it's worth it because you're still not guaranteed to win the cup because other teams are going out and making similar moves. We've seen both teams in New York go out and get better so far this deadline. We're probably going to see the Bruins and the Hurricanes add pieces, uh, the, the Avalanche, the Winnipeg Jets, the Minnesota Wild, uh, and other teams out west, Seattle, Vegas, they might be looking to add pieces. I mean, everyone that's in contention right now is going to be looking to add pieces at the deadline. While Patrick Kane could be a nice ad for the Stars, is it worth it for potentially one season where you have a chance to win if the future is then put in jeopardy? And I think that mixes pretty well with the third con I have. Is Patrick Kane healthy? Is it worth making this move for a guy that might not be fully 100% because, again, this is a huge drop-off in numbers for Patrick Kane, who had 92 points last season and only has 35 through 46 games this season. I mean, props to him for powering through, and it it seems like he's trying to be a good teammate to the guys on the roster in Chicago. He's trying to stay loyal to that fan base that has supported him year after year after year. But, But is he fully healthy? Is he fully at the level that he should be in order to be playing at a high level and contributing to a team's success. And, and obviously, I don't know the, the ins and outs of that. I feel like not many people probably do. 
But I feel like that's a huge risk that you're putting out there for, you know, you, again, you, you might be selling big prospects. You might be selling draft capital or even guys on the current NHL roster. And is it worth it for a guy that might not be 100 percent? In my eyes, no. But I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section down below on YouTube your thoughts on Patrick Kane and if you would want to see him sent to Dallas before or at the trade deadline. We're going to take one more quick break, and when we come back, we'll shift our attention from Patrick Kane to this weekend's matchup. The Tampa Bay Lightning are coming into town for a date with the Stars, and we'll get you set for that game right here, right after this. And we're closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars. Looking ahead to this weekend's matchup, the Stars looking to close out this week 3-0 and with the win Saturday afternoon over the Tampa Bay Lightning, a rematch of the 2020 Stanley Cup Finals. And Tampa has had a pretty busy week themselves, a pretty stacked week with a back-to-back on Monday and Tuesday. We saw them lose Monday in just a beatdown, a 7-1 to loss at Florida against their rivals, the Panthers. And then on Tuesday night, they return home where they lose 4-3 to in overtime to the San Jose Sharks. And they're actually, they, they will have played a third game this week against the Colorado Avalanche on Thursday night. I'm recording this before that game, but a rematch of the 22 Stanley Cup Finals then, uh, and then they will get on a plane and head to Dallas afterwards. And so a busy week for the Tampa Bay Lightning and not necessarily the stiffest competition, but they're, they kind of find themselves at a different side of the spectrum as the Stars coming back from the All-Star break, where the, star, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, I think, had won three in a row before the All-Star break, and they've come out and they have yet to record a win since coming back from the pause, whereas the Stars lost three overtime games in a row and have now come out and won two straight games. But Dallas Stars fans and that team know good and well that the Lightning are never a easy outing. They're never a team that you're going to see on the schedule and chalk them up as a win or, or an easy win, even if you are playing them at home like the Stars are going to be doing tomorrow. And this is a weird season for the Tampa Bay Lightning in my eyes because they feel like a, kind of an under-the-radar team. They're, they're getting talked about every now and then, but they don't appear as dominant as they've been in the past, but they're still a very solid team. And I think a big reason why they might not be getting that recognition that we've grown used to them getting is because of the division they play in the Atlantic division is an absolute slaughterhouse with Toronto Boston and then even the the quote-unquote lower teams in that division are are very good Buffalo Florida seems to be picking themselves up a little bit Uh, you know and even Ottawa and Montreal can surprise you uh, on a you know an off night or or, you know take advantage of the mistake of some mistakes that you potentially make so it's a weird year but Tampa's still a very good team despite being third in the Atlantic division they would actually be second in the in the central division right now not too far behind the Dallas Stars so it's really just you know one of those years like last year I think they were kind of in the same boat I think they finished third they got that you know first round playoff matchup with Toronto and people thought oh this is finally the year that Toronto's going to win Toronto seems to be better than Tampa Bay and while at times it may have appeared that way Tampa came out and showed they don't need to get that first seed in the division or in their conference in order to go on a deep playoff run. And while they did lose some pieces over the offseason, Andre Palat, Ryan McDonough, just to name a couple, they still have a lot of those key core pieces there. Andre Vasilevsky, Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, Braden Point. I mean, this team can burn you in a lot of different ways. And so the Stars are going to have to be ready to welcome this team into the American Airlines Center that is probably going to be playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulders. They, again, may have beaten the Colorado Avalanche on Thursday night. I know the Avs are dealing with some injuries right now, and this is a home game for Tampa, which is probably to their advantage in a matchup like this. But still, those losses, a 7-1 to blowout at the hands of their rivals and a 4-3 overtime loss against a team like the Sharks leave a bitter taste in the mouth. And so I imagine that this Tampa team is going to come out and they're going to play hard. They're going to play fast, and the Stars have to be ready to match that intensity like they did on Wednesday night against the Minnesota Wild. And, of course, it's another huge opportunity to pick up two points on a day where the Winnipeg Jets are finally coming back into action. Their off week started a little bit later and is running a little bit longer after the Stars have been back. But the Jets are back in action tonight, and they'll be looking to get a win against the Blackhawks or back on Saturday night looking to get a win against the Chicago Blackhawks and getting themselves back into the race for the Central Division crown, where the Stars have done a pretty good job coming back from the all-star pause, 
picked up four points so far, and they can continue to keep that train rolling against some pretty high-quality opponents, including Tampa on Saturday and Boston on Tuesday. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in today and the entirety of this week for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Uh, and you can also follow us on social media at Locked on Stars on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and you can also find and follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. Be sure to tune in back here on Monday. Uh, what I'll probably do is record an episode Saturday sometime early on Monday, recapping Saturday's game against the Lightning. And then I'll have that ready to post probably with some post game audio from players and coaches, things of that nature, the thing things that you guys have come to expect after a lot of home games this season. But I hope you guys have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl on Sunday. And we'll see you back here on Monday. 